Hey everyone, today I got something very special for you guys. A proof of concept of an unhackable first person shooter game. The whole conversation about Valorant's anti-cheat called Vanguard got me thinking of, is there a way not to rely on heuristics? As you know, Vanguard and similar anti-cheat like BattleEye use heuristics to determine whether or not a player is playing fair. But with this game called KFA, killed from afar, and you'll understand soon why I named it this way, there is no need for an anti-cheat after all, while remaining a game that is free of hackers. So no aimbots, no wall hacks, no speed hacks, and here's how. Relying on heuristics is a cat and mouse game. You usually have a flow of amount of hackers rising, followed by a ban wave. The anti-cheat learns how to detect these hackers and bans people abusing these new methods to cheat in the game. The problem mainly lies in the fact that the game provides information, such as positional data, that can be abused. The difference between KFA and other games is that KFA server has zero trust on the client. It does that by only accepting player input and handles literally everything from there. The server sanitizes the input, updates the game, but then also renders the game and sends the rendered pixels to the client. This is something no other FPS is doing, but this is how you prevent hacking altogether. By only sending the pixel data to the client, there is no information on the client to be abused, such as positional data of enemies, or hierarchical model data to read the position of the heads for aimbots. Hacking is now impossible. Even decals have been added to prevent pixel bots from snapping onto the enemies' their heads. Good things cannot come without condition. The consequences of this method is that the server will need a lot more processing power, or even a GPU, as well as available network bandwidth and latency becoming more vital. For every player, you will need to render their POV and process their pixel data at least 60 times per second. If you go of uncompressed pixel data on a 1920x1080 monitor, where one pixel consists out of 3 bytes of red, green and blue, you will need at least 6.2 megabytes per frame to send to the client. Since most people would at least 60 FPS, this will become unbearable at around 373 megabytes per second. If not only for the bandwidth, it will be the processing time to serialize this data to a network packet. As you know, streaming on 1080p is definitely possible in real time, like you're probably doing right now with this video. This is because the compression does amazing things and smart protocols are in place to efficiently encode, compress and quickly send data over the wire. KFA is no different. The art cell promotes the encoding scheme that is used to achieve 60 FPS. The encoding is that it counts the same amount of pixels next to each other and packs them together. Pixel colors are ID'd, which saves even more bandwidth and is synced up with the client. Furthermore, the final encoding is then compressed and then sent to the client with its own unique sequence number. The sequence number is required because fast UDP protocol could deliver the frames in the wrong order, where we drop the frames that should have already been displayed. Overall, the encoding and compression reduces the bandwidth from 373 million bytes per second to 612,000 bytes per second on a 1920x1080 pixel screen. This is a reduction of roughly 99.8%. This can even be further reduced by downsizing the rendered output, where the output will be upscaled on the client's machine. The bigger you downscale, the more bandwidth and processing time you save on the server, but the worse the game will look on the client. I have noticed that with this game and its art style, 720p is just as sufficient on a 1080p screen. The advantages of the server renders everything technique is very unique. If there is a patch relevant to the game, only the game server will need to get patched because the client only receives the pixel data anyway. There is also no more need for game packets entailing game related info to get the client and server synced up to the same game state, which speeds up development time and also prevents minimap cheats and wall hacks. There is no more need for interpolation techniques to hide lag since literally everything is happening on the server. There's also no more need of any kernel anti-cheat or user-level anti-cheat in general because nothing can be exported in the first place. The download size of this, well, game I guess, remains a few megabytes because you only need minimal assets such as audio and UI. 
because you're only sending pixels, the game could even be played on a phone or a 15-year-old laptop that is barely functioning. It is also possible to create multiple games on the server since the client only works with pixels anyway. This all works fine up till there is a latency big enough where the input does not feel responsive anymore. I noticed myself that with a latency of 70 ping or above, the user experience begins to rapidly degrade. Frame skips caused by packet loss or network congestion also hinders the user from enjoying the game experience, since 60 FPS is desired for a responsive feel. So therefore, I recommend playing on preferably a LAN environment or at least an area close to you where you have a stable network connection. Now this brings the question, could cloud gaming prevent hacking altogether? We can see the rise in innovation for cloud gaming such as Google Stadia, which is used to stream AAA games onto your favorite device. If bad actors cannot inject their DLLs into the game, have you as developer stopped hacking entirely? Surely cloud gaming will reveal new methods of hacking which presumably will primarily be aimed on the networking code and protocols between the user and the server, or maybe two other clients. Think of things like packet spoofing, DDoSing, or packet macroing. But we will see that in the future. Thank you for watching this video. Hit a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new. The source code of this proof of concept is linked in the description if you want to have a look. I hope to see you all in the next video and until then, have a good day and goodbye.